Hi there, I'm Andy and welcome to my channel about crypto. In today's video, I want to talk about what happened over the last few days, so the whole thing with FTX. And why do I think that it actually long term, it's, it's a good thing for crypto? Of course, it's absolutely shit at the moment. And I know that a lot of people lost a lot of money. And overall, the situation isn't great right now for crypto because of the, this whole situation. But I will draw some comparisons to the dot-com bubble in the late 90s and early 90s and essentially make some comparisons and why do I think that overall it's actually not, not a bad thing. As always, if you like those videos, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. And also, if you'd like to learn more about crypto, please do check out my course, Crypto Like a Pro. You can find the link in the description. So if you've been following this space, well, I'm sure you're aware that last week the news came out that there were some issues with the FTX cryptocurrency exchange, the second biggest cryptocurrency exchange in the world, just second to Binance. And essentially, in a space of a couple of days, the whole thing collapsed, which, of course, also took the whole crypto market down with it. So Bitcoin was trading last week around 21k just above that and then as the news came out about the collapse of ftx it dipped i think at some point to something like 15 and a half grand recovered a bit then crashed again and it's now bouncing around 16 16 and a half thousand dollars so of course i mean that's not great for the crypto market overall ether surprisingly it's actually holding up quite well we'll see how long that will last but then of course other tokens, I mean, F FTT, so FTX native token that crashed from over $22 to just over $1 at the moment. I'm pretty sure it's pretty much dead. And then many other tokens, including Solana, I mean, especially Solana was really affected. It went down from over $30 to around 13 So the market is overall overall in a really bad place. So overall the market is in a pretty bad place and I'm sure that if you've been on crypto Twitter or various Discord channels over the last few days, well, I'm sure you are aware that there's a lot of fat, there's a lot of, well, the mood is not overall great in the community. Because when big exchanges such as FTX fails, well, first of all, the main thing people are asking themselves is that, well, what will fail next? There is a lot of there are a lot of rumors that many other exchanges like Crypto.com and many others may potentially be insolvent and may collapse. Pretty much, I think at the moment the only two exchanges people seem to trust is are Binance and Coinbase. But the reality is that no one really knows what will happen in this space. And the second thing is that of course a lot of people lost a lot of money and a lot of businesses lost a lot of money. So that's also well really really bad not just for the space but for those individuals as well and of course it means that they're less likely to stay in the crypto space or come back to it at some point in the future however if we look at the longer time frame i think that's not necessarily a bad thing because at the end of the day it's not crypto that failed it's not the fault of bitcoin ethereum or blockchain technology or anything like that what failed is, is a person or a group of people, right? And the same thing happened many times before in pretty much any other industry in, at various points in time. We had Enron fa failing in, I don't know, late 90s or so. We had dot-com bubble. We had financial crisis in 2008 and beyond. It happened many times in the past that various sectors, various companies, well, led to either some market pullback or, or a temporary collapse. And at the end of the day, it wasn't fault of any particular technology or anything like that, right? It was just certain people making certain decisions which led to this situation. And it's exactly the same thing again. Whether that was done on purpose or it was just a series of bad decisions made over time that led to the collapse of FTX, that's pretty much irrelevant. Bottom line is, it's not the technology that was at fault. It was the person in charge or people who were running FTX, Almeida Research and other companies who, who contributed to this fall. And this leads me to drawing some comparisons to, to the dot-com bubble in the late 90s and early 90s. Because we had a very similar situation. The 
I mean, many people are drawing comparisons from between the last crypto market bull run, so the bull run that lasted until November last year, and the dot-com bubble. Personally, I think that the last bull run wasn't quite as explosive as the as the dot-com bubble, but that's largely irrelevant. I mean, there are certainly a lot of similarities. And the most important thing here is that, yes, in the late 90s, it was the internet, broadly speaking, that was the new technology. It was only about 10 years old at the time. And of course, there was a lot of artificially pumped value, quote unquote value in, in that space. Companies were valued much higher than what they were actually worth purely because they had .com in their name or something similar, or they were doing or pretending to do something using in the, the internet, whether that was actually in any way useful or successful or not, that, that was irrelevant. It was just the fact that the internet was the buzzword and all the money was pouring into it. Now we saw the same thing happening with crypto. In 2020, 2021, there was a ton of money pouring into this space and a lot of projects were making money or were able to actually get funding purely because they were doing something using blockchain technology or they had a token coming out or NFT or whatever. But very often there was not necessarily any real value there or it could be easily done without the blockchain technology, but then what would most likely happen is people would not invest in it. But the project actually wasn't special in the first place, if that makes sense. People would not invest in it because there was nothing there. And then people were suddenly interested in it purely because it had blockchain attached to it. What I'm trying to say here is that this collapse and the current bear market, well, it's not great, it sucks in the short term, but it's essentially necessary for the health of the space over the longer period of time. Essentially, you need to wash out all the bad players from the market or as many of them as possible and get rid of all, of all the crap projects, all the projects that never really should be here in the first place, that never really had anything proper going for it. Or maybe there was a good idea there, but they were just massively mismanaged and wouldn't really amount to anything. They were just poorly run companies. And just focus on the stuff that actually has potential, actually has either some current use cases or has potential for future use cases that can actually amount to something in, in the future. And just think about it this way. If we look at companies like Google, well, that was founded in September 98. Amazon, founded in July 94. eBay, founded in September 95. All of those companies went through, through the dot-com bubble. Of course, their value went up massively during the dot-com bubble, then crashed. But all of those companies are still here. Not only that, they're really, really valuable because there was actually something good there, right? The product, the idea, something had potential. And then the company developed over time. It, the leadership was strong. There was some vision there. So even if you invested in any of those companies during the dot-com bubble, well, you are still doing fine. Those shares are still much more valuable right now if you held on to them. And if you bought them after the market crashed, well, then you, you are in even better position. And this is essentially how I see the crypto space at the moment. Crypto, NFTs, Web3, Metaverse, all of that together. It's that phase after the dot-com bubble for the internet companies. Same thing is happening now with crypto, or at least that's how I see it. We are washing out all the companies that really shouldn't be here in the first place, or people who, who are just either poorly managing various projects, businesses, and so on, or just simply trying to scam others. And once all of that crap is gone, well, hopefully all that will be left is just good, solid projects. And those projects then, with the support of people who are interested in this space, will hopefully fl flourish over the next few years. So that's why I'm still really, really bullish on this space. That's why I think it's not necessarily a bad thing that all those companies are collapsing. I feel really sorry for everyone who lost money in this. I mean, it's... It sucks and sometimes it's not even, oh, you should do your own research. I mean, a lot of those companies like, well, let's just take FTX as an example. I don't think anyone expected or very few people expected that actually there was anything wrong there. 
and it wasn't an unreasonable thing to to invest in that company but at the same time it just shows the importance of the rule not your keys not your crypto don't ever hold any larger funds on an exchange regardless of how safe that exchange is supposed to be yeah you might have a little bit of money if you need it for quick trading but bottom line is especially in the bear market when things are really, really uncertain. I mean, in the bull market, there's money pouring into everything. So even crap projects will still do all right. But in the bear market, you don't know what will collapse next. So it's best just to hold your crypto in your own external non-custodial wallet, ideally in a hardware wallet, and just wait for this phase to, to pass over. And the most important thing is, keep looking into projects which you think have potential and what may actually be successful in the future, which projects, which areas, it, whether it's metaverse, crypto gaming, DeFi, whatever else, what actually has potential in those, in those coming years. Because I think that the next few years will be absolutely huge. I mean, I'm still really, really bullish on crypto. I'm still really bullish on blockchain technology. I think if you can survive those next two or three years, you'll be in a really, really good position. I firmly believe that by late 2024, 2025, maybe even into 2026, we will see a big bull run in, in crypto. But I also believe that until then, until at least early 2024, it will be probably quite rough. But at the same time, it's the perfect time to learn, it's the perfect time to research, and essentially position yourself accordingly. So when the bull run comes, well, you can take full advantage of it. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Again, if you would like to learn more about crypto, please do check out my course, Crypto Like a Pro. And I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.